stand here at a hospital that has been at the very heart of the care of the NHS. From hospitals in Glasgow to communities in York Minster. Train stations in London and hospices in Solihull. From the Houses of Parliament to political chambers up and down the country, standing in silence to remember and reflect. Her Majesty sending flowers and thanks to staff at St Bart's Hospital who cared for Prince Philip during his recent illness. A nation and its Prime Minister pausing to remember those we have lost in a year that has touched us all in different ways. It's been very difficult, I can't deny that. It's been the monotony of the days with not being able to go go where you wanted to go and do things. A lot of people were lost, but at the same time, I feel like something that society has gained is like a sense of like togetherness. I do think people are reflect will be reflecting today um, and probably reflecting on where they were when the announcement was made a year ago. The PM spent much of his year here doing this, a year since he announced the first national lockdown and we're in one still. When I asked you to go into lockdown exactly a year ago, it seemed incredible that in the 21st century this was the only way to fight a new respiratory disease. For month after month, our collective fight against coronavirus was like fighting in the dark against a callous and invisible enemy, until science helped us to turn the lights on and to gain the upper hand. Step by step, jab by jab, this country is on the path to reclaiming our freedoms. What do you think the main social, health and economic challenges will be? And will we be grappling with the legacy of COVID and the past year for the rest of our lives? Beth, I certainly think that this is something that we will all remember and be dealing with in different ways for probably, for certainly in my case, for as long as, uh, as I live. It's been an extraordinary uh, moment in our, in our, in our history and a, a deeply difficult and, and distressing period. Not least for him personally, having nearly lost his own life to the virus, now looking towards trying to fix the future. But the, the legacy issue, I think, for me, is education. And it's the loss that of, of learning for so many uh, children and young people. That's the thing we've got to focus on. COVID itself, I anticipate being with us for the foreseeable future. We'll have to do it, deal with it in some form or another. Now, science has extraordinarily responded to this. We will be able to bring it down to manageable levels, but it's not going away. So we will have COVID for the indefinite future. Living with the consequences of COVID for years to come, the Labour leader demanding we learn the lessons too. I think the government was very slow to react and we owe both the NHS staff and those on the front line and all the families uh, of those that have died uh, to learn the lessons uh, of the last 12 months, to have an inquiry and to learn what went wrong to make sure that we never repeat that. When Boris Johnson stood inside number 10 on this very day a year ago and told us all to stay at home, neither he nor we really understood what was about to hit this country. And as the end of this crisis finally comes into view, there will be a day of reckoning to both remember those who lost their lives, but also to learn the lessons of what went wrong so we can get it right when the next pandemic hits. But tonight we remember a doorstep vigil in Westminster. And in South Wales, this community coming together to pay its respects. The buildings of Bradford illuminated and Blackpool Tower shining brightly in memory of those lives lost. To the capital, a city and a country changed forever. The long road back begins. Beth Rigby, Sky News, Westminster.